In Pahatikeli Township, Kasha, rice is thriving where once nothing could grow. Known as seawater rice, this saline alkaline tolerant crop has turned barren land into fertile fields and contributed to improving food security. We have grown seawater rice in Pahatikeli Township for seven years. Initially, the soil was stark white. On landing, we thought it was snow, but it was salt alkali crust. Nicknamed seawater rice after wild varieties were discovered in coastal Guangdong, today's strains are bred to survive in soil with high salinity and still produce a bumper harvest. We collected these wild varieties, preserved them, and then used modern biobreeding and hybridization techniques to create new, more stable seawater rice varieties. With up to seven times more dietary fiber than ordinary rice, seawater varieties also create beneficial bacteria, which helps to improve the soil even further. Through seawater rice cultivation, you now see almost no salt alkali in the fields. Data show soil salinity was 0.3 to 0.5 percent on arrival. Today, it is about 0.1 percent. pH also dropped from 9 to 11 to 7.5 to 8. From just 0.13 hectares of experimental land in 2018, the project has expanded to a 667 hectare base, with yields increasing by at least 48 percent. However, for local families, the change is about more than the soil. By joining the seawater rice industry and leasing their land to us, villagers earn more every year, an economic boost. Villagers have moved from being farmers to industrial workers and even to entrepreneurs. Rosie Yoldash works on the farm and earns additional money by leasing his own land to the company. I have just under half a hectare of land. In 2021, I rented out just over half to Zhongnong Haidu, earning 3,000 yuan annually in rent. That same year, I also started working here with a monthly salary of 3,000 yuan. At present, I both collect rent on my land and receive a salary, and life for my family is getting better and better. With close to 67,000 hectares of seawater rice already grown nationwide, the Xinjiang project is seen as a model for tackling saline soils far beyond this region. This is in fact a global challenge. About 10% of the world's land surface is affected, and China is one of the most impacted countries. Expanding seawater rice across China and ultimately the world to transform saline soils into fertile fields is a vision that can be realized. Wading through what was once considered wasteland, this is President Xi's big food concept in action. And just like the rice that now grows here, China is learning to thrive and evolve, preparing for the demands of tomorrow. And it doesn't stop at the soil. Around 1,000 kilometers away in Changji, a new kind of farming is redefining what's possible above ground, with smart greenhouses turning science fiction into daily reality. The Smart Agriculture Science and Technology Pavilion is a showcase for the latest technology in Chinese farming. The systems here are highly automated. Temperature, humidity, light, and CO2 are kept at the precise levels each crop requires, and the plants are fed exactly what they need, exactly when they need it. The plants are grown in multiple layers without soil, using substrate and hydroponics. The constant climate control allows harvests almost year-round, leaving crops unaffected by Xinjiang's harsh winters or scorching summers. Compared with field crops, greenhouse plants are unaffected by weather extremes and mature more quickly. Take tomatoes as an example. We harvest 45 kilograms per square meter every year. Because they are grown on a perpetual cycle system, we can pick fruit every day for 10 months straight. What once took 70 days in the open field can now be ready in just 25. All the result of technology made in China. Currently, at least 90% of the equipment is domestically produced. We have also filed more than 50 patents. And with larger facilities already planned, the technology is set to spread far beyond this single site. Really, in the future, this site will also be a dedicated research and development hub. We will refine the equipment. First, second, and third iterations will emerge in succession. We are pushing automation to the point where human labor is largely unlocked from the process. 
from transforming salty soil into fertile farmland or revolutionizing crop yields using smart greenhouses. China is proving that the future of food isn't just about expanding growth. It's about thinking outside of the box, growing bigger, smarter, healthier, even in the most unlikeliest of places. Ray Addison, CGTN, Xinjiang. Now, in Beijing's classrooms, there's a new subject on the timetable. Lessons in AI literacy are now being rolled out for children as young as 11. The aim is not just to teach them how to use AI, but to innovate new ways for its application in the future. Feng Yilei has the story. At Beijing number 11 school, sixth graders are building their own intelligent agents. With teacher guidance, they've created a bot that allows them to talk to legendary Chinese scientists. Creating this intelligent agent helps me think step by step and think more actively. Teachers believe a first taste of machine learning is all about enlightenment. Through playful, project-based courses, we help children build an intuitive sense of what AI can do. High schoolers take it further in collecting data and training models while students at Beijing Ruta Middle School are designing a facial recognition checking system, teams at Beijing Hongzhi School manage to code light control programs with speech recognition knowledge. Some schools are teaming up with local tech companies so that students get to tour robot factories, sitting driveless car simulators, and learn from engineers. We focus on everyone, on the whole system, and on real-life practice, creating scenarios for students to explore, sense, and apply AI in their own way. More than 1,400 schools across Beijing now are rolling out specially tailored AI literacy classes. Early in May, China's Ministry of Education issued guidelines banning students from copying AI-generated answers for homework or exams, and urging schools to teach responsible AI use. Experts warn if students only turn to AI for answers, they lose the chance to think creatively and critically for themselves. With AI curriculums, the hope is that those young minds won't just use AI but understand it and hopefully one day lead the new wave of breakthroughs with it. Feng Yilei, CGTN, Beijing.